Everyone, thank you. Once again, this is Bruce Muffson from Southern Ridge of Nevada coming at you with another video. First of all, I just want to say uh, the response to the Earl sweatshirt that we did was just phenomenal. Blew up, incredible, and amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that's been watching and also the comments been incredible. It's been a pleasure to answer each and every one of them and the comments that have come in in general. Thank you, our audience. We could not do it without you. So the song Solace, again, it was clearly a home run and you guys loved it. So guess what? We're doing another Earl Sweatshirt song because you want it and we're going to give it to you. Now, um, let me just say this about Earl. He's truly an amazing artist. No argument about that. And, you know, like everyone else that we have reviewed, it's like eating potato chips. Once you eat one, you can't stop. Well, I, I've stopped eating potato chips. But the point is, is that continue to grow more and more and listen to more and more of their songs. One song leads to another. The song I want to cover today from his latest album is Playing Possum from the album Some Rap Songs of All Things which is 15 songs, each less, than 30, each less than three minutes, covering 22 minutes almost in total. This album is the soundtrack to his grief. And this is the first album to be released in the wake of the death of his father, South African poet Kiora Petesi. I'm probably saying that name wrong, and I'm going to try and pronounce his last name this past January. However, what I'm going to do today is a little bit different. I want to discuss the growth and maturity of Thebe, again, last name like his dad, I'm not even going to embarrass myself, formerly known as Earl Sweatshirt, and how it all begins to come together on this song from two interviews that he gave that show you um, and how his words relate to those watching and give you insight and awareness on how to relate to yourself and to your own family even if you've had discord and conflict in the past. Okay, the first is an interview that he gave with NPR Radio with Ari Shapiro on December 7th, 2018. I picked out the lines in both interviews that were the most significant to me, and I'm going to tie everything together on his growth and awareness and how it relates to you, of course, our listeners. And the, it goes, the, the title of the interview, if you want to watch it, look at it yourself, is Earl Sweatshirt on Resentment, Growth, and Giving Yourself a Chance. Here's where we get started. My favorite part about this is my whole name and then differentiating Earl Sweatshirt as a publicly known, you know, publicly known person, P-K-A, publicly known as. Okay, wants to separate himself. You see a lot of people in purgatory. If they can't really be their self, you know what I mean. These are his quotes. Not having my identity stamped out for myself early on really had me like on just taking on the flavor of whatever, and that is really dangerous. He's coming self-aware. This man, referring to his father, when he was 21 years old, got exiled from South Africa. Like it was different, like different things. What he's saying is how he grew up and I, how I grew up completely, not even the same world, different universes. When I was 21, I was at X, SXSW, which is a music festival, I believe, in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Different lifestyles, bro. My dad grew up in a world he could never comprehend that I grew up in. Different, different perspectives. I'm this age now, another quote, where else you can get trapped in people's minds as 18-year-olds, as whatever age you are as a child star. He wants to get away from that. He's seen what's happened to so many people that get typecast and can't move on. And all they're known for is the same thing over and over again. What it shows is that he's growing up and seeing things now as a young adult and no longer as an adolescent. And he is learning how to appreciate what he has and where he comes from. And so many people only learn this far too late. But to his credit, Thebe is realizing, I got to go back to my roots. I got to connect with my roots. And by connecting with my roots is where I find myself and I start to grow literally the way I want to. Now, the next interview was on the 14th of January, 2019, so a few weeks later. And the title was, Earl Sweatshirt Does Not Exist by Sheldon Pierce. And he writes like this, the now 24-year-old, 24, 
Raphet makes a clear delineation between the man he is and the pseudonym he bears. Over the course of the day, he refers to Earl as an operation and a thing. He's separating himself from, quote, quote, what he had turned into. I am not, I'm not that. That was just made up. But I got I to gotta shed that skin like a snake does to be true to who I really am and stop being who people wanted me to be or who I was following in the past. That's growth. As I said before in the other song, he was so popular that when he was sent to the Samoan Islands to go to that school, Carl Reef Academy, for a year and a half, you would actually hear chants of free Earl of basketball games. These people didn't even know who he was, but they'd start chanting, free Earl, free Earl. They knew next to nothing about him, yet he'd become their profane patron saint. You become a legend in your own mind, not always the way you want to be. And you realize you're not even sure who you are anymore. Now, there's a quote from him. One thing I know for sure is I want to be normalized. Wow. Insightful for someone who's 24 to realize that. Usually they run headfirst into the glam and glitter and get chopped up into little pieces. But he's saying, I need to be normal. This hype is dangerous on so many levels. Now, it's interesting to me that he released an album in 2015 called I Don't Like Blank and I Don't Like to Go Outside in 2015. I don't like this and I don't like to go outside. It makes sense to me when you feel you don't know who you are and you become like a celebrity trapped by your own success, like what you expected before, like a bird in a gilded cage. Everything is great inside, but to go outside means mass hysteria, mass panic, and do people really like me for who I am or who I pretend to be? And that alter ego could be very, very dangerous to you. There's a reason why Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde ended so badly, because you start to, you start to forget who is Earl, who's Thebe, and it gets confusing when you don't have a sense of normalcy and being grounded. Another quote, everything that he does now is a push not to be a prisoner to decisions he made as an immature savant, meaning savant being a genius, and decisions made on his behalf when he was half a world away, when he was in the Samoan Islands. My te- as, he, as Earl says, my teens are under a microscope and really threatened to define me, and it still do, he admits. It's really important for me to figure myself out. What I'm telling everybody here is his words are like almost like a clinician. That's why I tell people all the time anyway. If you're having dealing with suicidal issues, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, stress, where is it coming from? And the answer generally is, I have no clue who I am, Bruce. I'm living this puzzle where I'm trying to pitch the pieces and that don't fit. I get it. This makes total sense for anyone to do, let alone when you're in a fishbowl, like Earl says, and everyone's looking in. He even said he'd like to go to college, but he's afraid if he goes to college, just everyone staring him in a classroom is going to be impossible to study, so he's looking at getting some online classes. Again, there's a thought process, there's maturity, he's growing up, he's looking at things from a different angle. Now, he writes this also. That the writer writes this, as a child of writers, he's starting to come to terms with the idea he was groomed for this life, meaning to know how to use words well and to know how to use the English language well. Growing up, he said, his mom would make him write essays to explain why he should get anything he wanted. Well, the mom is a law school professor at UCLA, and the dad was a fairly well-known poet who was a, the poet laureate of South Africa one time. Being raised by educators... There was a point where my stupid ass made that an enemy. He realizes now he's running from the fact that these people were giving him great opportunities by teaching him how to be mature, how to be an adult, exposing him to things far above that of his peers, and he said, I made that an enemy. You run from what they're cloaking you with goodness and kindness and, and, and a chance to be successful for the future. At that point, he was running away because he didn't know who he was. And so many of us get into things like drug and alcohol abuse, overeating, terrible relationships, terrible choices with money, got to follow the crowd, be like everybody else, because you don't know how to be yourself and you become everyone else. And that's what Earl realized about himself. So another quote from from the article was, between these two modes, quick rhyming technician and experimentalist, 
a conversation is taking place about who Thebe is and what Earl Sweatshirt represents, the yin and the yang. Okay, you see that Zen piece? You got the white and the black fighting for supremacy. You start to try to understand who am I? What am I trying to be? Do I have self-confidence in myself? And then when you're in your teens, even the best of us have doubts. Even when you're in your 70s, you have doubts. And he's accepting the fact that I don't know who I am. That was great when I was a teenager. It's not so great anymore. It almost tells me that, that his relationship with Art Future has basically come to an end because he's going to be a solo artist. He is trying to figure out who he is and to define himself. And here's an interesting quote he comes up with. This is Earl's words. And if you're a god, they love you like a god, and they hate you like a god. Neither is real. And you start to realize what you turn into, you become a legend in your own mind. And you, the higher you go, the easier it is to fall. The higher it is to fall. When you have yourself centered and you don't become insane with like Hollywood stuff where don't look at me, don't talk to me, uh, taste my food for me, I don't have to pay for anything, I can be a jerk, well, I can say anything I want to say, that's when the problems become. You, you become a god, but like gods fall. You have to be grounded, something that he now is beginning to understand. He is, this is another quote from the article. He is cognizant of where his older music fits into the spectrum, too, but he wants that association erased. His breakout mixtape was a product of teen angst and internalized rage frothing to the surface. He's now hoping to bury it with music true to who he really is. He wants to be true to himself. Get away from the coat of many colors that's false. You know, you put something on that's not real, that's not who you are. Who are you really? And so many people, my God, that I've worked with, that I've assessed, they have to be somebody that they're not, and they don't realize that they're on a spinning wheel like a rat in a maze, you know, woo, 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 woo. where are they running to? They're running to nowhere. And it's all this fame, fortune, and glamour that in the end goes nowhere. Everything is gone because you want to be something that you're not. And people are so afraid to be that, but yet that's the place you want to be. That's the sweet zone. He says, some rap songs is the last Earl Sweatshirt album on Columbia. That's his record label. I'm excited to be free because I can do you know, my own stuff now. And he goes like, in the end, the article like this, the interview, the piece that I liked, I've been really trying to infuse myself into my work, he says, and a part of that self is the importance of family. Well done, Earl. Now, what I want to do is break down this song, but I'm going to break it down a little bit different than I've done in the past. What does playing possum mean? Okay, it, if this is a reference to his dad that he believed was playing dead in his mind. He knew his dad, of course, had passed away, but he didn't want to believe it. And... The addition of both his parents to the album was intended to be a surprise that he planned as a conciliatory gesture to his dad, but tragedy sp struck again when his father passed away on 1-3-18 before Earl got a chance to send him the album. He wanted to make amends. What I'm telling everyone here is this, is a lesson. Make every day count. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. I'm not trying to push you know, any religious thoughts on people, whatever higher power you belong to, make every day count. And never hesitate to tell somebody you love them, you care about them, you miss them. Don't hold the grudge. Just be a good person. You'd be surprised. You never know what tomorrow is going to hold for you. And if you get a chance to tell somebody something positive, send them a card, send them a note, you know, make them feel special, always do it right away. Don't push it off. And now after he was famous, I found this out also, he actually went back home, home meaning South Africa, where his father had other children, and he reconnected, he never knew these kids, I guess, with his half-brothers and sisters, because there's six of them. So um, here's what I wanted to say about this. And this came from the first interview. It got made while well, my dad died, while well, I'm still figuring out that code, that like playing possum's code. So like making this song, calling it playing possum, and then my dad dying, playing possum means playing dead. Possums, I know this from my dog when I was younger, he used to kill them, they play dead. They're still there and fully act like they're dead, and then they just slink off. And then he says, he wanted people to be aware of this, he was telling us to the first interviewer, this is less about my dad dying, and instead it's what 
both of my parents are talking about and the conversation I was trying to have them in with each other, which is a blend. He did a nice job of this. Just like them back and forth. It's crazy. It's excerpts from my mom's keynote speech that gives. It's this really beautiful opening that she did. And then this is from my dad's poem, Anguish Longer Than Sorrow. I just want to say a couple of the lines that really spoke to me, and I was really impressed how Earl did this to get them, why he put it together. It's Cheryl Harris, his mom, and the dad again. I'm just going to say the lines that the mother said that really impressed me, and then I'm going to say the lines from the dad that impressed me. Thank you to my family, to my partner, Mysterio, who I love and depend on more than I can say, to my son, Thebe whose growth and insights inspire me, a thousand kisses. Thank you to my brothers, my niece, my nephews, my sisters, my friends, my whole family network. The father has to me a very powerful one at the end. He goes, to have a home is not a favor. In other words, what I got out of that poem, I read the whole poem, to have a home is not a favor is that it shouldn't be taken as like for granted. Like, you know, you're lucky to have a home that they care about you. Because some of the homes I've been to, quite frankly, were horror shows. And there was nothing there but just anger and bitterness and unhappiness and depression and stress. And it's a smell of defeat and despair and misery. A home should not be a favor. You should be able to come home, knock on that door, and it should be come on in. There should be unity. There should be happiness. There should be love. There should be togetherness. That's what should be there. And when it's not there, a home should not be a favor. Beautiful line. It was a great poem. And I'm not really big into poetry. But it was inspiring to hear how he, the guy put it together who was in exile from his own country. Very interesting. A home should not be a favor. That's right. Come home, Phoebe. Don't be a stranger. Come home. That goes out to everybody out here. Parents, open your doors, be appropriate, and kids, as you grow up, grow up maturity. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to stumble, but have a place to call home. Now, what I want to tie everything together is this. Congrats to Earl for taking these steps. This album, to me, is about searching and maturity. And it, some other great songs on there, we'll cover them as well, but I really wanted to focus on this song. He is now realizing the importance of being grounded, realizing your family is not the enemy and actually loves you, and that he needs to find his own voice. What he is, what is, what is Thebe right now? He's a work in progress. But he realizes that the stuff he did years ago is over and he has to grow up. And in 10 more years at 34, he'll be even more different. His music will be different. He'll be different. He may be a father. He may have children of his own. But the goal is to have it done right. You need the right foundation, and you do that by connecting with those around you that truly care about you. It may not be family. It's a different world today than I was growing up. But find family of some type that cares about you as a person. My point is that we're all works in progress, and we all say and do dumb things growing up. Hi, that would be me. Did plenty of dumb things growing up. I wish I could go back. And trust me, while I do them less, I still do or say things that I regret or never should say in the first place to begin with. And here I am, 56, and I'm still trying to figure myself out. I didn't get all that great guidance as a kid, and a lot of you that have written in, I can kind of tell I haven't gotten it either. That's why I'm saying find a mentor or find a family member that you can relate to, that can look out for you. I made a point, if I can go back in time 40 years now to be 16, I wouldn't take revenge on people. I wouldn't want to be the captain of the basketball team and make the last shot or date the cheerleader or really anything like that. I'd really focus on myself and say, wow, I got a great opportunity to grow in a different way. And all the 40 years that I wasted in terms of trying to figure out who I am, I know immediately how to do that. That's what I wish for everybody listening to this video. You know, even as a father, how I interact with my kids who are now in college is now a lot different when they were, in fact, kids. I still do dumb things, but I still try to do less of them and my own way grow up and be the adult I need to be. To my kids, to my wife, and to those around me, my coworkers, my friends and family. Even if you make a mess of things growing up, 
still try to reconnect with family and realize that in most instances, they only want the best for you in your future. That's why I like playing possum so much, is that he put his parents in the spotlight and gave them the accolade that they deserved. They raised him. He was an easy kid to raise. Did his parents make mistakes with him? I'm sure they did. But guess what? I make plenty of mistakes too with my own family. And, you know, in conclusion, parents, keep the door open. Be approachable. And guys and girls, you can go home again if you begin to grow up and realize you got to grow up. You got to be mature. You got to take things seriously. As Stevie said over and over again, I have to be true to myself, which is for everyone. It took me years to figure this out. And I'm still trying to figure myself out because, quite frankly, I didn't get what I needed growing up. He's smart enough to realize he was given that growing up, and he squandered it. He doesn't want to squander it anymore, and he wants to take every opportunity that he has now from his family. Now it's going to be his mom because his dad passed away. But he was smart enough to realize my mother is looking out for me. She gave me this great opening line, great opening speech. And I went to go find who my half-brothers and sisters were, literally another continent away, because I don't know who they are, and they don't know who I am. I'm this big superstar, so to speak, but to them, I'm just a cousin or a half-brother, really a half-brother they never met before. And watching how they live and watching how I live, be grateful. As he said, I went to the beach every day this summer. He's getting out of the house. He's realizing he could reconnect with people, find new friends, find new identity, find a new musical identity. Odd future is out? Okay, we all move on. Trust me, in life, you will move on. But it's who you move on to and how you're moving there that makes all the difference. Families, in closing in this, never give up on your kids till the buzzer sounds. No matter how crazy they make you. And guys, realize that when you... Think for yourself is the first real, maybe clumsy step towards maturity. You're going to need more steps, thousands more steps, but at least you're going forward. And just realize that both sides need to grow to see progress. I really want this video to be more of a unifier than anything else for families, adults, people who are becoming adults, even kids who are adolescents. Look out, search out, find that base, find that rock, don't be adrift, and make it work for you and grow up to be happy and successful and clinically okay. Thanks again for watching. You know the routine by now. You send in a comment, you'll get it back from me. We got new stuff coming out, new exciting stuff coming out. You guys are all going to be part of it. And we thank you for everybody that's hit us over 200,000 views for keeping us and pushing us along this journey. Thank you again.